JBN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Jamaica bracing for increased rainfall associated with tropical wave. Jamaica is expected to see increased rainfall as a slow-moving tropical wave moves across the island Tuesday into Wednesday. The Met Service says projections are for cloudy conditions with periods of showers and thunderstorms, which may be heavy at times, to affect sections of most parishes, especially southern and northeastern parishes, beginning this morning through to Wednesday evening. Fishers and other marine interests, especially those in and offshore the south coast, should exercise extreme caution as sea conditions will deteriorate in the vicinity of showers and thunderstorms. This tropical wave is forecast to merge with a broad area of low pressure across the southwestern Caribbean Sea by Wednesday evening. The low pressure system has a 50% chance of tropical cyclone development over the next seven days and could begin influencing weather across Jamaica by Friday. Ghosts shot the nearest home in Poros, Manchester. A man was fatally shot on Monday night while walking towards his home in Clarkstone, Poros, marking another tragic incident in Manchester's rise in murder toll. Residents identified the deceased as Samik Stevens, otherwise called Ghost or Brown Man. According to reports, around 9.40 p.m., residents heard loud explosions sounding like gunshots and later discovered Stevens lying in a pool of blood with a gunshot wound to the head just under 150 meters from his residence and less than 100 meters from the poorest main road. This latest killing has brought Manchester's murder tally for the year so far to 44, according to police statistics, a concerning increase compared to the 38 murders recorded during the same period last year. Up to Saturday, November 9, the parish had recorded 43 murders, highlighting an escalating trend in violent crime. The police have not identified any suspects or motives in Stephen's death. Three legal guns seized by St. Catherine North Police, two suspects killed. The St. Catherine North Police have seized three more illegal guns and 50 rounds of ammunition over the weekend as part of a sustained crackdown on criminal activity in Spanish Town and the surrounding communities. According to Superintendent Opto Nicholson, head of the division, two of the guns were seized following fatal confrontations with two suspects who were shot and killed by the police during their encounters. Superintendent Nicholson provided details of the seizures during a press briefing held on Monday afternoon, emphasizing the division's commitment to reducing the illegal gun trade and violent crime in the area. The first one was on Saturday, November 9, shortly after midnight along Job's Lane, a man attacked police officers who were in plain clothes with a firearm. The police officers immediately took evasive action and the man was shot and injured. A 9mm pistol loaded, a 9mm pistol loaded with 10 rounds was seized from this man. He was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Now, it is to be noted that this man was seen by the police in the Old Harbour space on Friday morning sometime after 9 a.m. where it appeared as if he was a laborer doing construction in one of the housing schemes. 18-year-old student charged with a double murder in downtown Kingston. An 18-year-old student has been charged with a double murder that took place in downtown Kingston just over two weeks ago. The accused, Everett Smith, otherwise known as Giant, of Upper Oxford Street, Kingston 14, was charged on Monday following a thorough investigation by the Major Investigations Division, MID. Smith faces two counts of murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The victims, 23-year-old Jenny Mitchell, otherwise called Dante, an employee of the Overseas Examination Commission, and the 21-year-old Donald Walters Jr., also known as Donto, a car wash attendant from Dumfries Street in Denham Town, were fatally shot on Tuesday, October 22, around 7.50 a.m. at the intersection of North and Orange Streets. According to police reports, Mitchell and Walters were walking along the roadway when two men armed with handguns approached and opened fire, shooting both men multiple times before fleeing the scene. The injured men were rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital, where they were pronounced dead. After investigations, Smith was charged while in custody at the Metcalf Street Juvenile Remand Center. Police charged him following a question and answer session in the presence of his attorney, Everton Smith. Additionally, it was positively identified by a witness during a video identification parade conducted on Monday, November 4, 2024. Workers at the Secrets and Breathless Resorts protest over work and low wages. Staff at the Secrets and Breathless Resorts in Montego Bay, St. James, walked off the job this morning, complaining of overwork, low wages, 
lack of overtime pay and disrespect. <laughs> And say, yo, give one money gun, one money gun, one pack of salt, and I'm the salt. So, why you can't sign the paper? Give me one second. So, one thing. So, what is a union? I don't have a sign. I can't move up. Yo, me want to pass it to me. You don't have to do this to me. You don't want to go chat. Yeah, we lead, I know. They're afraid to talk. And you tell me, say, what is this? I'm going to keep the meat and come and come to 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 the meat. Money, money, just catch up and pat and come and move. By the time I'm going to get the meat, I'm going to get the meat and come back. I'm going to get the meat and get paid Thursday, Friday before pay come. A two bar ten dollar run one bar. I have to do bar porter work. You have to do every type of work. A bar was supposed to work with four bartender. A bar support, which is the bar porter. Two bar ten dollar do that. And then supervisor, I tell us say yo. Bar and chop out the ice, if you run, go for ice and come back and the motel, you say you left the bar, left the service and go for A slavery in a brother. I'm tell him directly, put on my name, because I don't care, because I'm tell him already. And when he tell me, say, yo, it's a strong word, I say, hey, go to HR with him, I tell him, say, I don't care, I say, yo, carry, go there, because I will go tell him. I'm going to go by the camera, I'll tell him, say, something to you. Yeah, man, brother, one dollar ninety five cents, they are working for one, brother. And the money you are paying, brother, you are paying, brother. You understand me? Maybe two dollars in a brother. How are you, brother? If you do something with me, if you have a bar, run a bar and I kill yourself, I run up and down, brother. You come and work a man, you can't find me for you as a man in time. You run the storm and try to get things from storm. When you got storm, you get from storm. I one man in a storm, I tell you, say, yo, brother, me under pressure. You can't kill him. I can kill him, I fight. You're not going to fight. You understand me? You fight, you're not going to fight, brother. It do not make no sense because I guess you're going to fight over the big man things. You can't do that, brother. You understand me? So, brother, I slay every bro. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Labour said an urgent meeting was scheduled for 1 p.m. Tuesday with the management and the staff. The Ministry said the meeting will be used to ventilate the issues and arrive at an amicable solution. Footpath erected McGlashy in St. Andrew following road collapse. Residents of McGlashy in Mount Prospect, West Rural St. Andrew, who were marooned after a section of the road in their community collapsed, have resorted to using a temporary footpath for entry and exit. Member of Parliament Julie Cuthbert Flynn so the pathway is not ideal for any type of commute, but it's the only available route. The road collapsed on November 2 during heavy rains. Still raining every day, and so nothing has really changed except NWC came into the community the day after and start, began laying pipes so that the residents could be connected to water supply. But as far as anything else, we're still awaiting the NWC technical team to really come back after their assessment to really make a definitive on as far as what is going to be done. I've not received any reports just yet. And I think they have to really quantify the damage. What is going to be the alternate route if there's any that was identified? Because again, as you know, where the landslide took place, houses are meters away from there. Is Are they going to encroach on somebody else's property? So I think a lot of things would have to go into this assessment. A farm road that was cut years and years ago, and we are going to try to reinstate that through possibly a rather program so that the coffee farmers are able to get to and from from the Mount Prospect area to the Mount Oreb area, which, which is the other side of where the breakaway is. But that will also ease the burden. It's a longer route down into the Brandon Hill area, so we still will have to look to see exactly what we're going to do. NWM police to address traffic issues in Mobay. The authorities are to move to address traffic congestion in Montego Bay, St. James, which has been an ongoing cause for concern. The National Works Agency, NWA, has indicated that it plans to repair potholes along Westgate and Overcoat Boulevard to help ease congestion. The situation has seen deadly gridlocks. Both mornings and evenings, from Rosal to Howard Cook, Norwood to Westgate Hills, and Barnet Street to Bogue, motorists have been experiencing inconveniences. Over the last three weeks, motorists have been spending between two to four hours to and from work, battling not only a busy thoroughfare, but large craters are one of the busiest roads in the country, the Howard Cook Highway. Commanding officer for the St. James Police, Superintendent Iran Samuels, 
said that the police will begin relocating traffic personnel to the most affected roadways. This undertaking will start today at 2.45 p.m. in anticipation of peak traffic, which begins around 3.30 p.m. each day. Samuels would not confirm how many traffic officers he was short. However, Isle Place sources claim that some 40 cops are needed to man strategic points in the city. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.